What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games we're going to be checking out King Under the Mountain. This is a game that's very much RimWorld. I'll be honest with you, it's basically RimWorld with dwarves, okay? That's all you really need to know about it. It exists somewhere in between RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress. But it's been in development for like a really, really long time. They had kind of a publicly available alpha that was up on itch.io years and years and years ago. But the game is getting ready to go into early access on Steam. So I figured we'd dive on in and see if it's ready for prime time here today. So anyways, you can look down below in the description if you wanted to get a copy of the game for yourself. Or if you just wanted to wishlist it or take a look at it. They do have a demo that's playable right there. So I highly recommend that you check out that demo since they took the time to put it on out there and see if it's your cup of tea. I'll kind of talk about the way I feel about the game at sort of like the final closing couple minutes of the video. But other than that, you can also find a link to my Discord, my Twitch stream, and my Twitter down below, just in case you are so inclined to come and see me on other mediums and tickle my tummy in new environments. Let's start a new game. Necrohammer? That's a sick name for a colony, dude. I'm gonna keep it. I think that might be the first time that procedurally I've gotten a name for a colony that I'm like, yeah, dude, that's a dope name for a colony. Necrohammer. Alright, sounds good. Let's go ahead and check it on out. Alright, so here we are, and we've got to decide what we want to do here. Now, we got to pick a place to make our base. Unfortunately, water is, like, really, really far away. Our dwarves do need to drink, and so, like, normally, I like it when this kind of gets a little bit closer to the mountain. And, in fact, this might work a little bit better over here, except for, like, the sheer volume. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Except for the sheer volume of coal that's over here that we're going to have to dig through. Um, well... I sort of feel as though we'll take the good, we'll take the bad, I think. I think we'll just start off right here because this seems like the logical point because it minimizes our walk to water uh, once water becomes a concern. And so, like, I'm just going to I'm gonna focus on, like, the main things we need to get done right now. Uh, so there's our dwarves. We've got Un Granite Clan. We've got Hackett Steelhold. We've got Kari Manyfall. We've got Olga Steel Hatchet. Holmes Ancient Anvil. We've got Sylvie Elder Sand, and then Canute Charcoal Trousers. <laughs> okay, it's Charcoal Trouser. Uh, what we need to do for right now is we need to start digging, and we need to start digging like right this second, uh, because this game is actually on a pretty tight timeline where you've got to get moving or you're going to starve to death before too long. So we'll go ahead and put a dig order in right there. And while they're doing the dig order, what we need to do is we need to start making farming areas. Uh, we do have to watch out for thunder and lightning. I'll probably just do little 5x5s five five over here just to keep them a little bit smaller. Yeah, just a couple of 5x5. Five five. We are 5x5. Five five. Uh, we'll put a little 5x5 five five right there. A little 5x5 five five right there. Looks good. And then we'll kind of like speed it up. Do we only have one guy digging right now? Is that the truth of the matter? That we only have a singular individual who is digginating? Okay, well they're going to start digging all that out right there. My first recommendation is, the first observation that I had about this game actually, is that stone drops way, way, way too much from, from mining walls. Uh, there's almost so much stone that drops that there's almost like nowhere to put it basically. Uh, let's go ahead and we will put in a, a, we'll put in a stockpile zone over here for raw materials. It'll take up like this entire space, like I'm not even kidding you. And we're going to fill that up pretty quickly. Uh, and so what you'll see is they'll start ferrying rocks over there just to get them out of the way. And later on in the game, we'll figure out where we want to put it. The other thing that we need to do is we need to assign people to clear this entire area. Uh, all these bushes, they can catch fire. And fires are bad. You definitely don't want fire to happen. And so we'll kind of like just make like a big kind of firewall right here so that nobody can get after us. If like the Thunder God decides to strike his anvil and decides to come after us, then at least we'll have a nice fire break around the area where we're trying to settle. It shouldn't take them too long to clear that out. It looks like we actually only have one farmer right now, which is kind of shocking actually. Uh, we've got you, you go be a farmer, and you go be a farmer, and we actually don't have a lot of miners either, weirdly. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do then is we're going to have to make a stockpile zone, and the stockpile zone can just, oop, I clicked the wrong thing. We can go with a zone, and then we go with stockpiles, and then I just need like a little stockpile for tools, and I also need it to be on the inside of the cave. 
And so, like, if we could drop some tools off over here, that'd be fantastic. That way I can kind of repurpose pickaxes onto other people so that these digging tasks go a little bit faster. So if we have anybody around that's like a wood chopper, you can be a miner. And you're already a cook, so we'll make you into a farmer. And then instead of being a stonemason, which is kind of weird... We have a lot of cooks around here, alright? You'd be a miner. There we go. So these guys should come pick up pickaxes and they should start digging just to make this show a little bit of semblance of progress. We've got Cassiterite right there. Okay, so that's going to give us tin. We've got Hematite. That's iron. All right. Well, if we can find some copper around here, like some Malachite or something like that. And in fact, I think we might have just hit it. Chrysocala. Oh, it's turquoise. Okay, well, turquoise, we got copper in there, so it'll be all right. We're going to set up some basics over on this side. Uh, we're going to need to set up, like, some rooms, basically, for stuff to be in. So what we'll do is we'll kind of do, like, a little... We'll do, like, a 5x7 right there. And, like, a 5x7 right there. And then we'll kind of split this up. And these are going to be stockpiles for other various sundries, I think. Yeah, that sounds like a decent plan. I think I can live with that. So we'll kind of mash that out right there. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get it done, but it needs to get done. And I think with three miners on it, they should be able to get it done pretty fast. Our tools that are out in the rain, they're going to rot and be destroyed, unfortunately, if we leave them out in the rain long term. And then we also need to get a stockpile in for our seeds right now, because one of the fundamental flaws with the way the logic works in this game is that every dwarf has a bunch of stuff in his pockets at the moment. And you can take a look and you can see what's in his pockets right here at any given moment. Now, we have farmers, and they need to plant their crops, but they can't plant their crops because this guy has the corn seeds in his pockets. Until we have the corn seeds inside of storage, uh, they flat out will just not plant the crops. And so it's like one of those weird things where you kind of ask yourself, like, why are my dwarves unable to hand off things to other dwarves that they need to do their jobs? Like, it should just be a quick, like, handoff, or even better, just get rid of the idea of seeds altogether and just do it how RimWorld does. Like, I, for the life of me, I don't think there's really any way to do colony building better than RimWorld already has. So if you're developing, like, a RimWorld-style game, I would just... I would totally copy RimWorld just like around the clock in all honesty. Uh, we'll put seeds inside of here so that the crops can get grown. We will put products inside of here. And then once we get those all out, we'll decide what gets stored in there. But for right now, I don't really have a preference or care. I think we'll put that right there. There we go. Looks good. I'll probably actually slam in another door on this side too so that we just have like ease of flow on the interior of our base. And we've almost got all the bushes cleared out. I need to assign these. So I want corn. And I want potatoes. And I want tomatoes. And I want carrots. All stuff that can just be eaten. Like we don't have to worry about much. We can just get out there and eat it. That's all that I care about. Just eat it. Eat it. Like, you know, let's follow the song, man. Just follow the guidance, the supreme guidance of Weird Al of the Yankovic, dude. That's the most efficient way to get this done. As soon as they're finished over here, like, obviously all this stuff is going to need to be hauled over to this stockpile. I'll adjust the settings real fast. Oh, good. It's already set up to accept ore. Okay. That's fine. We're already, like, five days in. The days in this game are really, really, really short. Almost to the extent that it's hard to get things done like on the timeline that you want to get things done because like they're constantly sleeping almost. So as you can see, they're putting the seeds in the soil. We kind of have to hope that there's not any thunder strikes. Uh, the amount of times that I've had my crops wiped out by like thunder in this game, dude. And like at this point in the game, before we're able to replenish our seeds, that's pretty much just like game over. You might as well re-roll. And so I lost two colonies to that so far. That's why I'm making fire breaks and stuff around my base is because this game kind of suffers from the same problem that early RimWorld has uh, had back in its early alphas where it was really easy to like have your entire map burn down through no fault of your own. So we've already got tools are set up over there in the hallway. I don't really care too much about moving that around. We've got products inside of there. Uh, we can use this as a granary, I guess. And then we need another zone. And like, yeah, maybe I'll move the maybe I'll move the tools. There we go. We'll put the tools inside of here. Did it work? Okay, it did indeed work. That means that I can go back over here, get rid of that stockpile, and now I just let them haul stuff around for a minute. I'm gonna continue clearing out bushes and whatnot. I don't want anything flammable anywhere near my base. I've just, I've had so many issues because of fire that, like, 
I just, I gotta clear everything out of the way just to make sure. Otherwise, there's an obsessive part of me that's like, you know, you're gonna get killed by fire again. I'm like, no, please, God. I'm not strong enough. I can't, I can't die to fire again. I just, I can't. I can't die to fire. If I die to fire again, I just, I don't know if I could live with myself. Uh, we're gonna make like a little bedroom over here. I think that won't collapse, but I'm not positive that it won't collapse. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of that right there, just in case. There is gravity in this game. If you have a room that's too large, it will collapse. Um, it won't kill your dwarves or anything just yet, as far as I know. There's no combat or damage in the game just yet. It's purely building at this juncture. But still, it makes things take longer when the whole world is collapsing down on top of me and making me want to cry myself to sleep. And so I'm going to endeavor to do my best to make sure that situation doesn't happen. So they moved a bunch of the tools over to there. I actually don't know... It's already been flagged, so they should pick it up and take it at some point. I think they're just, like, obsessively working on getting a fire break dug through all the all the bushes. Once they, figure, once they fill up this storage right here, I'll get rid of the bushes over here, too. I don't know if I can actually harvest berries off any of these bushes, but I'd be inclined to try. It actually doesn't look like I can. So, like, it looks like some of the bushes have, like, something on them. Like, some kind of, like, I don't know, some kind of tuber and or kumquat, dude. But it doesn't appear as though I can harvest that just yet, so I guess I won't panic about it altogether right this second. We'll get a mine dug right there, and then I haven't decided what I'm going to do on this side. Maybe I'll make like a kitchen or something on this side. We also need to get some workshops up and going, because I think being able to get to the other side of the river via a bridge is going to be important as time goes along. And so I'd like to get on top of it. They're all going down to the river to drink because dwarves don't have to worry about Jardia. Obviously nothing has ever pooped inside that river right there. That's not a risk that you have to uh, terrify yourself over. When they're done mining over here, I may give them just a minute to haul all this crap out to the stockpile. But then again, we're kind of on a tight timetable and I kind of want to get things finished. Okay, well, let's do a bedroom then. That's where we'll start off, is we'll just kind of bedroom it up over here. And with the bedroom, we can just click on it and go to furniture. I know there was another menu where I could do that, but, like, it's too late now. It's too late, okay? It's too late. Uh, we'll just put in some beds over here. Looks fine to me. Should be enough for all my dwarves. I think they need eight beds. And that looks like eight beds if I'm counting correctly. And I may be. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since kindergarten, but you know, I'm still fairly confident in my ability to numerate. All right, so the bedroom's done, and that means we need to start kind of like figuring out what we want to do next. I think workshops are going to be really, really important. So I would like to get that done. We'll just kind of go like five by seven right there, and we'll kind of go five by seven right there. And then we'll connect these to the stockpiles over on this side. That way, this will be like a wood workshop. And then we'll have like a stone workshop around here too. They are a little bit grumpy because they're sharing rooms. But I'm not entirely sure if... I I'm not super sure if anything happens due to them having a low mood. Like, I don't know if that's implemented as of right now. So it may kind of be like a non-factor that we don't really need to stress ourselves out about. But it's kind of hard to say. They're going to dig around down here, and we'll make a couple more work zones in this area. Uh, yeah, but like I said, they are grumpy about sharing a room. But it seems to go away fast enough, so, like, I'm not going to, like, cry myself to sleep about it. Whereas in RimWorld, you know, making sure everybody has, like, their own quarters where they can do their own thing, it doesn't seem to matter quite as much here. But then again, I've never bottomed them out to, like, a minus 50 or anything either uh, when it comes to... when it comes to setting up their moods. Uh, so we do have a lot of stuff available right there. Okay, so our next area is all nice and taken care of, and we've already got this, like, dedicated to what we wanted to do. So we've got a sawmill over here. I would recommend that we throw in the sawmill bench on that side, and then I need another zone for making a carpentry workshop. So we'll put a carpentry workshop right there. I am going to need a carpentry work. Actually, I don't think we can do the carpentry stuff yet. So instead, we'll start with stone. We'll go stonemason. There we go. So stonemason goes right here. And then we'll put in a stonemason's workbench. 
there's no way to really center it the way that I want to center it, so I'm just going to accept that it's going to be in a weird spot, and that that's going to upset me, and that there's nothing I can do about it, and then I'll just have to learn how to contain my inner reing. It's kind of interesting. Are they planting, like, all the carrots? Well, we have tilled earth. I think it looks like they got most of the carrots in, but maybe not all of them. All right. Is this a granary over here? Is that what this is supposed to be? Yeah, okay, so we don't have any food stockpile just yet. If we take a look at our construction area, they are putting blocks and everything else that needs to go in here in here. We don't have any digging or anything else to do for right now, so we should have a little bit of time to play around with. It does look like this stockpile over here is filling up, but like... One thing at a time, I suppose. If they can beautify, I'll feel a lot better about all this. Uh, this is now up and running, so that's good. We've got a wood cutting bench, and if we had logs available, they'd start cutting them into planks. They are eating through their rations at kind of a terrifying rate, so I think we may want to get a kitchen set up pretty soon, too, so that we can make more food. I don't know how big the kitchen needs to be, but in my experience, pretty large is probably the answer to that question. So maybe that's not going to divide properly. All right, so we'll put you in right there. And then I'm going to guess that this is going to collapse. So I'm going to leave two blocks in right there just so that it doesn't. Harvest hasn't come in yet. It looks like the tomato plants are getting there, though. It looks like the corn is also getting close, as are the potatoes. And the carrots may have already come in. It may just be that they ate all the carrots already. Also a possibility. So kind of hard to tell, in all honesty. But the carrots look kind of like they were planted fresh just like a minute ago. And so... Wait, what did you just put in there? Potato seeds? Okay. Apparently my man dropped off some potat seeds. It does seem like potats are really like the only thing that we've got full room for. Okay, so she got some tomatoes off the tree right there. She's carrying around some potatoes. Yeah, we should be able to sack this stuff up really, really soon. Good. And looking at the granary. So none of them dropped it off in the granary. Well, they should definitely do that. I would like it if you would put things like, listen, I'm an organized person. I like to have things in its proper place. And when they get out of their proper place, you know, you're, not, you're keeping them in your pockets, man. I don't want no pocket taters, all right? No pocket tots. Pocket tots are a health concern. They worry me. I don't know what's been in them pockets. I couldn't honestly tell you within a shadow of a doubt. But I'll tell you this, food that came out of a pocket is normally something that I'm kind of like, eh, about. Not necessarily like full ick, but definitely partial ick, like, eh kind of gross moderately gross like yeah dude I'd rather eat like a potato out of a pocket than like a potato out of a butt obviously but like even so I, I feel like the potato in the pocket still maintains a certain level of you know health code concerns okay so our kitchen space appears to be done so let's get the kitchen rocking that way maybe we can do something with that so feasting hall no I need the there we go the kitchen so what kind of fun stuff can I make inside of a kitchen also, why has this not been built yet? Oh, because they haven't even hauled stuff out of the way yet. It's probably because I think my miners are probably the only ones that are available for hauling when they're not, like, on the job. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Man, they've almost filled in that entire space, dude. Poof. It's a lot of space filling. All right, so we can get a water barrel. I feel like that's a really solid plan, so let's put in one of those. One thing that is a bummer is that there's no tooltips telling you what it costs to build any of this stuff. So it's, like, kind of hard to say, but we've got, like, a kitchen worktop right there. And we can get a cauldron in, like, maybe over here. And then a grist mill. That's where we're going to thresh the grain. So I feel like we should probably... Yeah, we can fit it in right there. That seems like an okay place for it. A baker's oven. I don't know if we have the stuff for just yet. What are you doing? Cooking soup? Does this already have its production set up? Huh. How do I set up what they're going to be making, or do they just do it automatically? Interesting. 
I thought it would be kind of like RimWorld where I'm just like, make meals. Simple meals. Like, something like that. But apparently we're making soup right now. Oh, apparently that allows them to stretch out your stuff. So we've got 12 servings of tomato soup right there, and they're just going to leave it on. That was actually a thing that people did back in medieval times. I think there's a place in England somewhere where they've had a stew on the fire for like a thousand or like 700 years or something like that. And that's like their touristy claim to fame is that you can come eat their 700-year-old stew. But it actually works. Uh, they used to do that. There was a common pot in old peasant villages, and basically different farmers would throw what they had inside of it, and it was just kind of like a... A stew and because it's always over an open fire 24 hours a day it doesn't really go bad like the stuff falls to the bottom it burns off so on and so forth you throw more matter into it as more matter <laughs> needs to be applied to it like it's kind of like one of those weird things that I can't really explain the chemistry of the science of but it is a real thing oh cool we've got water inside of our base now too so like now only one person needs to move to haul things and then the other person Everybody else can just drink out of the pot, basically, whenever they need to. They're building the threshing table over here, but I haven't grown any wheat yet. So that would be the next thing that I would kind of keep an eye on. I don't think anybody's eating our tomato soup right now, but then again, all of them have, like, rock bread rations inside their pockets. And so maybe they're not going to do that. Uh, as far as the granary goes... Oh, the granary is only for... Okay... So, like, where do I put... Interesting. Where do raw foods go? Oh, right there. Okay, well, that will fix it up for us then. There you go. Now we've got a food supply. There it is. Very. I was kind of wondering, I was like, dude, these guys are all walking around with bulging pockets, overflowing at the seams with tomatoes. Like, just go sit them down somewhere. Apparently, I forgot to check a box, so that's going to be on me. That's going to be my bad, Roger. That's going to be my bad, Roger. You shouldn't have done that. He was just a boy. All right, so we've still got seeds left over. It does look like you get seeds back from growing. And so, so long as this doesn't burn down in a horrible fashion, as has happened to me on occasion in the past, I think we should be on good footing right now to just mash our way through this. Uh, continue digging down this way because I'm going to need some more space pretty soon. My guess is that the stew is just going to stay on. Does it have like a description or anything for the stew of what it does? So you can serve a large quantity of soup to hungry settlers. The soup is produced in a kitchen before being moved to a feasting hall for serving. Oh, I can't be expected to eat my soup in a non-hall of feasting. Okay, apparently the dwarves have standards, and those standards dictate that we must have a hall of feasting before they can properly apply soup to their faces. Gotcha. Well, that was it's a good thing I looked up that description right there. It's a real good thing I looked up that description. Otherwise, I would have just been like, I don't understand why it's not working. And just, I put video on the internet, and I hope people like it as I stumble. Fair enough. Fair enough. We don't have any logs to cut, so I would suggest that we also set up a uh, choppination over here of all of these. What are these right here? Ironwood trees. Okay. We're chopping down ironwood trees. Those look like aspens and spruces. Good. We didn't get any low-class woods over here, dude. I'm always worried in my colony settlers that all the wood around is going to be like pine or like balsa or like beech wood. And I'm like, dude, we need the baller woods out here. Coco Bolo, Bubinga, you know, walnut, black walnut, cherry, oak. Those are the baller woods right there. And if I can't have the baller woods, then frankly, I declare war on the elves, okay? So seeing as it is currently Automana, I don't withhold a whole lot of faith that we're going to get another harvest in. So hopefully the soup holds. Because we are running low on rations right now. And we are going into the Vintar season. You know, you guys can pick up more than one log at a time. I'm not trying I'm not trying to be a cruel overseer here, but I just I sort of feel like you can move more than one log at a time. Like I believe in you. You've got sturdy dwarf backs. You know? Sturdy dwarf backs that cannot be held down. Okay, so we've got grist mill already taken care of. Kitchen worktop is already ready to rock. I could probably move the water barrel. 
But like, why stress myself out? How are we doing over here? You're producing planks. Well, I'm glad to hear that because we seem to be awful, awful low on planks. So like, you know, get me some of that iron wood up in here and I will appreciate your efforts, sir. Oh good, our first fire. Well, luckily it was raining. I told you fire was gonna happen, dude. This game routinely, like the entire map burns down. I promise. I'm not lying to you, I'm not making it up. Like, do you know how many of these dwarf fortresses I've lost? I've tried to make this episode numerous times and my stuff always burns down, okay? Like, that's why I have a very specific build order, get everything inside, hope that the fields don't burn down. That's all you can do. That's all you can do in this cruel, cruel world in which we dwell. Uh, we need to get a zone done down here. We'll just make like a very rudimentary feasting hall for right now. And then we have a serving table. We have a feasting table. We have another cauldron. So bread loaves go there. Do I need two cauldrons in order to make this work? I don't have another cauldron. Here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in a feasting table, right? And we're just going to test how this functions for right now. I have no idea what they're making this feasting table out of. Hopefully something rad, like something really, really cool and baller, like, you know, gold flecked with platinum, but somehow I doubt it. We're also going to need more workshops pretty soon to make, like, metal goods and things of that nature. Smelters, all that fun stuff. Is there a reason the kern and the potatoes aren't being uh, planted? Do we have a... We got lots and lots of kern seeds, okay. Fair enough. Well, it looks like our harvest is coming in, so at least that's good. I like the idea that we have many, many crates of food sort of waiting for us in here. Why is it that tomatoes go in a crate, but potatoes go in a sack? I feel like tomatoes are kind of delicate. Like, I don't think there's a whole lot of ways to store. Like, every time I'm on the freeway and I see those big giant trucks full of tomatoes with, like, the open back on them, I was like, man, it really sucks to be the tomato at the bottom, doesn't it? Sort of an allegory for life, huh? Like, tomato at the top is seeing the sunshine, breezing along, having the ride of his life. Basically a 15-hour Disney ride to wherever he's going to be consumed. Tomato at the bottom just got to be there and smell the farts of all the other tomatoes. Doesn't get to see no sunlight. The crushing pressure and weight all over his body. Like, I'm just, I'm just saying, dude. It just it kind of feels like an allegory to me. A little bit of a performance hit when I zoom out to scale for whatever reason. But I told you I'd give you my thoughts about the game. So, like, the tough thing about this game is I like the lighting. And I actually, I really, really like the textures of the objects. They feel like they've actually got contours to them. And so the art design is very, very good. And the way that they've used the lighting in order to introduce sort of like a texture or like a bumpiness to all of the surfaces is quite good. I like the way that that looks. The real, like, I think, I think the real elephant in the room is this. This game is going to have a tough time because this game is releasing into a world where RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress both already in exist and are already both very, very, very far into their late development cycle. And so, like, I, I think the idea that, like, getting somebody to play this game is going to be the tough part because if you're into the dwarf half of it, you're probably just going to play Dwarf Fortress or Nomoria or something like that. And if you are into the colony builder part of it... Um, the question arises that you've got RimWorld. And so this is not me talking about, you know, this game being bad. Please don't take it as me saying that. It's just that this game is so early in its development and there's so many quality of life things missing and there's so many tooltips and stuff like that missing that you're getting in on like a very, very early project and it's releasing into an ecosystem where all of its competition is out here just really, really put together, really, really ready to rock. I mean, you know, and so that's what sort of concerns me. Like, I haven't run into any major problems except for stuff that used to happen in the old RimWorld alphas, like your entire map burning down. Um, there's a lack of control here that I think is going to need to be remediated, or I'm sorry, there's a lack of control here that I think is going to need to be fixed. So, like, I can look at my settlers, right? 
but the way that they've got jobs sorted out is just like not really that efficient once again i think the the thing with this game is that it's natural to kind of want to avoid doing the things that RimWorld is doing in order to avoid people being like, oh, RimWorld clone. Like, I get why they've designed all the menus to be very, very different from RimWorld. But as I'm playing this game, I can't help but feel like I wish that I could open my Settlers menu, click on each one of these guys, and I wish that there was a window right here where I could just tell them to prioritize certain jobs, like in a 5 to 1 ranking, you know what I mean? Like, it, the problem is, I think, that RimWorld is so streamlined and so well put together that it's impossible to compare any other game in its space to anything but RimWorld. And so, like, I think that's the rough road to hoe that this game has in front of it. The stuff that's in right now works. I've had no crashes. Occasionally, the AI does weird logical things, but those tend to be stuff that gets fixed up later on as time goes along. There is an extra layer to kind of, like, food prep and creating things that I think is quite good and I think is cool that sort of, like, hybridizes somewhere in between the complication of Dwarf Fortress and RimWorld. Uh, but those are just my concerns about the game as of right now. And none of them have to do with the quality of the game itself. They all have to do with the fact that this game is in its infancy and it's, you know, kind of like a five-year-old that's heading out onto Steam to fight with Dwarf Fortress and RimWorld who are like 32-year-old bodybuilders with a background in Muay Thai. It's just, it concerns me. Um, why you would pick this over the other offerings on there. So hopefully we'll keep an eye on it, and over the years it'll continue to develop, and maybe it'll go its own way, and it'll branch off in directions that diversify it from the competition. But until then, my name is Splattercat. I like to sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had King Under the Mountain. Tomorrow we will very likely have something else. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Take care, and that's all I got for you today.